Hello and welcome to Spectrum News at 9. My name is Xavier Robert, coming to you live from the beautiful hills of Ibiakurun. Let's take a look at the headlines. President Buhari describes PCC as best suited agency to domicile whistleblowing policy. Army others deployed to INAC offices in Imo State. Plus, Kurdish protesters clash with police after Paris shooting. Details of these stories and Mo in a moment. First in our news tonight is a report that President Mohammed Bahari has described the Public Complaints Commission as the best suited agency commissioner of the commission, Abimbola Ayo Yusuf, and members of the management team during a collective visit in Abuja. He thanked the commission for conferring him with the award of the Grand Ombudsman of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. President Bahari pledged to continue to do his best in expanding the frontiers of anti-corruption, rule of law, and good governance in Nigeria. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Bahari has approved. The approval followed the retirement of the erstwhile managing director, Dr. Abimbola Alale. This was contained in a statement by Uwa Suleiman, who is the media assistant to the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Isa Pentami. The statement noted that Funtua was, before his appointment, the Director, Health Community Affairs, Safety and Environment at BUA Boar Cement PLC. National minimum wage is critical to national development. This was announced by the Minister of Labour and Employment, Chris Ngige, at a public enlightenment and sensitization workshop for field officers monitoring the implementation of the national minimum wage in Abuja, which was organized by the National Salaries, Incomes and Wages Commission. Ngige said enhancing compliance with the National Minimum Wage Act would ensure that workers were not shortchanged. As a satisfied worker, speaking further, he said the workshop was critical to implementing the mandate of the Ministry and the Commission. On the legislature, uh, there was a power play at the National Assembly today between members of the Senate and House of Representatives Joint Committee on ICT and cyber security over a bill to repeal and reenact the National Information Technology Development Agency, NITDA. The bill seeks, among others, to empower NITDA to fix license non-compliance with the Act. The proposed legislation also seeks to establish the National Information Technology Development Fund to be funded by a levy of 1% of the profit before tax of companies and enterprises with an annual turnover of 100 million naira and above. Stakeholders have raised concerns about some provisions of the bill which they said overlap or use up statutory powers and authorities of other agencies of government. So in the legislature, the House of Representatives has urged President Muhammad Bahari to urgently order the Chief of Defence Staff, General Lucky Rabo, to initiate coordinated joint security operations to flush out terrorists from Kaduna and the Boeing states. Moving a motion of urgent national importance, Minority Whip Gideon Gwani decried the terror attacks in both the House passed several resolutions on similar motions and communicated them to all security agencies without any result warned that if no stringent measures were taken to safeguard the lives of Nigerians, the nation's security might become more precarious. The House urged the Chief of Army Staff, the Inspector General of Police and 
the commandant of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps to set up a joint patrol team to comb farmlands and forests in Ebony State to flush out terrorists hiding representatives to pass the Electoral Offenses Commission bill to enable the country deal with cases of electoral violence which has characterized some of the elections in the past. The call was contained in a statement released by the Deputy Director of Public Affairs of the Commission, Fatima Mohammed, on behalf of the Executive Secretary of the Commission, Tony Ojuku, in Abuja. Ojuku noted that if the bill is passed by the House of Representatives and subsequently signed into law by the President, it will empower the Independent National Electoral Commission to concentrate on organizing credible polls. He said the responsibility of prosecuting electoral offenders will rest on the proposed National Electoral Offenses Commission, a suit by former Minister of State for Education, Chukwemeka Mwajuba, seeking to avoid to void the nomination of Bola Tinubu as the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress APC. In the judgment, Justice Zainab Abubakar held that she lacked jurisdiction to entertain the suit. According to the judge, it was statute barred, having been filed outside the 14 days allowed under the Constitution. The suit had Tinubu, the APC, and the Independent National Electoral Commission as defendants. Uh, this is the second time. In politics, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEX, has security personnel, including the Army and Department of State Services, DSS, have been deployed to its offices in Imo State to curb attacks on its facilities. This comes barely 24 hours after gunmen attacked and vandalized the INEC office in the Isu local government area, marking the fourth of such incidents in Imo State in less than three weeks. Other attacks were recorded in Olu and Oru West local government areas, as well as the state headquarters in Oweri. The resident electoral commissioner in the state, Professor Sylvia Ago, addressed the security crisis during a live appearance on television. Baba has deployed former force spokesman Frank Mba and six other commissioners of police to various commands and formations across the country. According to a statement by the force public relations officer Muywa Adejobi, Mba has been moved to the border patrol force, force headquarters Abuja. The posting followed the recent completion of the Senior Executive Course 44 at the National Institute of Police prominently. The IGP has charged the newly posted officers to hit the ground running in the areas of crime fighting, public cooperation and safety. He also called for support and cooperation from members of the public to the new police helmsmen to enable them perform optimally on their mandate. In the meantime, the Inspector General of Police Usman Baba has urged police personnel in Eboyi to ensure that the incessant burning of independent National Electoral Commission offices ceases immediately. Baba gave the order today in Abakaliki while addressing personnel of the force as part of activities marking his visit to the state. He urged the personnel to do all within their powers to protect INEC facilities and other public facilities in the state. Still on Shikingwari and Giwa local government areas of Kaduna State, the Kaduna State Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs Samuel Arouan, who confirmed this in a statement, said troops of Operation Forest Sanity had neutralized eight bandits and seized six motorcycles during ambush patrols in the Chikun Beningwari general areas. He said the feedback to the Kaduna State government indicated that troops had set up ambush positions, contact with bandits and neutralized eight while recovering four motorcycles and three mobile phones in the first successful mission. According to Arun, the troops then engaged bandits in a second mission and recovered two motorcycles. Away from that now, the standard organization of Nigeria San has celebrated 50 years of existence the body used the opportunity to interact with Anambra manufacturers and consumers while restating its commitment to quality and standards.
Speaking during the ceremony in Newi, Anambra State, the Director General and Chief Executive Officer of the organization, Farooq Salim, stated the need for everyone to understand the importance of quality and standards, which are keys to the economic growth and well-being of society. He further expressed satisfaction in both that both manufacturers and consumers had realized the importance of standards while embracing standards set by the organization in the interest of products and services. Back here, Aquabum State Governor Domi Manuel says steps are being taken to resolve the lingering crisis of confidence between a group of People's Democratic Party PDP governors and the national leadership of the party. He stated this while speaking with journalists in Uyo after a meeting with the governor of Benue State, Dr. Samuel Lotam, who is a member of the G5 aggrieved PDP governors. Governor Maniel, who is also the chairman of the PDP Presidential Campaign Council, said the lingering crisis in the party was of deep concern to its stakeholders. The governor noted that the meeting with his Benue State counterpart was ongoing reconciliatory efforts would soon yield the desired results. On his part, the governor of Benway State, Samuel Tom, blamed the lingering crisis on what he called the arrogance of the party leadership. Governor Tom said the aggrieved governors were still open to reconciliation and peaceful resolution of the crisis if their demands were met. Meanwhile, Aquabum State Governor Domi Manuel has assured the people of Mkwareni local government his tenure. Governor Manuel gave the assurance when he led members and some candidates of the People's Democratic Party on a gubernatorial campaign rally to the area. The governor, who noted that the local government area had got a fair share of projects and appointments by his administration, said the road, when completed, would boost the local economy of the area. Government House correspondent Jane Owa reports that Governor Emmanuel applauded the people of the area for their support to his administration and urged them to come out and elsewhere. Capital Luxury, the leading brand that provides luxury products and services, has been honored as the luxury company of the year. At the 2022 annual Top 10 Magazine Awards held at the prestigious Sheraton Hotel in Lagos, the top 10 magazine awards celebrated the best in the industry while recognizing companies and individuals who have made significant contributions to boost the country. The recognition describing it as a testament to the hard work and dedication of its team. Capital Luxury has established itself as a top player in the luxury industry offering an unparalleled selection of high-end products and services to its discerning clientele. The Top 10 Magazine Awards ceremony was attended by some of the most influential personalities in the country and industry, making it a highly coveted accolade. Still to come in the news. Facebook parent Meta to pay $725 million in Cambridge Analytica scandal. Do stay with us. Season's greetings from Spectrum TV.
One truth not often told is about the transformation in Africa. We paint the African picture the African way, laced with truth, detail, and the color of the African continent. Join Uyai Anyekan every Tuesday and Thursdays at 4.30 p.m. Spotlight Africa, telling the African story. The Nigerian police, which is the only one allowed by Cruz our governors have to share police powers with the president as stipulated by the constitution. We do not have a federal government police force. We have the Nigerian police force, which shall be administered, organized, and supervised by the Nigerian police. No, my lord, I want to say something. I want to say something here. Perhaps it might also enlarge the scope of people who should be invited here for examination. My lord, if we cannot find those who literally murdered Abiola, who are those people who could be said to be the beneficiaries of the death of Abiola? Rogers has linked you with some of the killing city. He never did. He linked you with the attempted murder of Ibru. He did not. My lord, the murder's counsel is leaving the evidence in our murder. Is this an adversary proceeding? It's not, my lord, but uh, you can't be talking about cases which are in court, Is my this lord. an adversary proceeding? It's not, my lord. These cases are in court, my lord. I'm just reminding you, lord. My lord, my lord, sorry, my lord. I think I'll be in court of my lord. Legally Speaking, a program that deals with legal issues and questions we face as citizens of this amazing country, Nigeria. Legally Speaking, join us every Friday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. for Legally Speaking. Many thanks for staying tuned. We move on now to Africa, where the commander of the East African Regional Force, based in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, has urged the local population in the area of Kibumba to return home, as it is now secure and safe. Major General Jeff Nyaga, who is part of the Kenyan contingent, was speaking as the M23 rep, the East African Force. Reports say the area lies along a major road that heads to Goma. In a statement recently, the M23 rebels said they had decided to withdraw from the area as a goodwill gesture in line with the agreements of a regional leaders summit in the Angolan capital Luanda in November. Still in Africa, Burkina Faso has ordered the United Nations coordinator in the country Barbara Manzi to leave by the end of the day, declaring her persona non grata, translated in English as an unwelcome person. The foreign ministry made the development known today. Without giving any official reason for the expulsion, the ministry asked Manzi to leave Burkina Faso today. And Foreign Minister Olivia Ruamba said Manzi's decision to unilaterally withdraw non essential UN staff from the capital, Ouagadougou, had justified the move. Elsewhere, the Ukrainian president Volodymyr Zelensky says Kyiv would boost its footprint in Africa next year by opening 10 new embassies and strengthened fights of Russia's full-scale invasion, in part by promoting a humanitarian grain initiative to help alleviate hunger in highly vulnerable countries. Recall that Russia's blockade of Ukrainian agricultural exports through the Black Sea had sparked global grain and fertilizer shortages earlier this year, endangering millions before a UN broker deal partially eased it in July. Zelensky told a gathering of diplomats in Kyiv that Ukraine was overhauling relations with dozens of African countries that needed to be strengthened next year. Meanwhile, the Netherlands will provide Ukraine with up to 2.5 billion euros in aid in 2023. The Dutch government announced the plan in a tweet. It said the money was earmarked for military assistance, work to recover critical infrastructure and to help investigations into possible war crimes. Prime Minister Mark Rutte said as long as Russia continued its war against Ukraine, 
the Netherlands will provide military, humanitarian and diplomatic assistance to Ukraine. In a related development, Ukraine has estimated that its grain harvest fell by around 40% year-on-year due to the Russian invasion. The head of the Ukrainian said a grain harvest of 65 to 66 million tons at the end of the year. Ukraine is reportedly a major exporter, but Russia's invasion in late February stopped shipments and blocked 20 million tons of grain in Ukraine's ports. In the meantime, Russian President Vladimir Putin has told the country's defense industry chiefs to up their game to ensure that the Russian army quickly got all the weapons, equipment and military hardware it needed to fight in Ukraine. Putin, who has cast Russia's war in Ukraine as part of an historic effort to push back against what he says is excessive Western influence over global affairs, made the comments during a visit to Tula, the center for arms manufacturing. He said the most important key task of Russia's military industrial complex was to provide its units and frontline forces with everything they needed, be it weapons, equipment, ammunition and gear in the necessary quantities and problems it had suffered from in Ukraine, promising to give it whatever it needed to prosecute a war nearing the end of its 10th month. Still on the crisis, Russia's ambassador to the United States, Anatoly Antonov, has compared the state of U.S.-Russia relations to an ice age. Antonov described the risk of a clash between the two countries as high. He said it was hard to decide when talks on strategic dialogue between the two sides could resume but that talks on prisoner swaps had been effective and would continue. According to reports, U.S.-Russia ties have fallen to their lowest point in decades amid the fallout from Russia's military campaign in Ukraine and the consequent imposition of Western sanctions. To more developments from the war in Ukraine, North Korea's foreign ministry has denied the United States for providing lethal weapons to Ukraine. Japan's Tokyo Shimbun reported earlier that North Korea had shipped munitions, including artillery shells, to Russia via train through their border last month, and that additional shipments were expected in the coming weeks. The White House said the North had completed an initial arms delivery to a private Russian military company, the Wagner Group, to help bolster Russian forces in Ukraine. Telephone call that the United States must stop its old routine of unilateral bullying. Wang accused the U.S. of trying to suppress China's development. He asked Washington to pay attention to Beijing's concerns, warning the U.S. against trying to challenge China's red lines using salami slicing tactics. He was referring to the practice of using a series of small actions to achieve a much larger result that would be difficult to accomplish with a single large action. The remarks by Wang underscored the deep tensions that mark relations between the world's two largest economies, even as their leaders have tried to re-engage in diplomacy in recent weeks. In the United States, a historic and brutal winter storm has put 240 million Americans under severe weather warnings today. This is as the United States faced holiday travel chaos with thousands of flights cancelled and major highways closed. Heavy snow and howling winds reportedly upended holiday plans for millions at one of the busiest times of the year just days before including normally temperate southern states. According to the National Weather Service, temperatures plunged below minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit in some locations with a staggering 240 million people, 72% of the U.S. population under winter weather warnings or advisories. 
Uh, still in the U.S., the House of Representatives January 6 Committee's final report asserts that former President Donald Trump criminally engaged in a multi-part conspiracy to overturn the lawful results of the 2020 of the 2020 presidential election. The report also found that Trump had failed to act to stop his supporters from attacking the Capitol. The 845-page report concludes an extraordinary 18-month investigation into the former president and the violent insurrections two years ago. It comes after the panel interviewed more than 1,000 witnesses, held 10 hearings and obtained millions of pages of documents. In a forward to the report, outgoing House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said the findings should be a clarion call to all Americans to vigilantly guard their democracy and give their votes only to those dutiful in the defense of the Constitution. Meanwhile, former U.S. President Donald Trump has deflected blame for the deadly January 6 riots, dismissing an hours-long call gap in the White House's call log during his supporters' match on the U.S. Capitol early in 2021. In an interview with Newsman, Trump said he wanted to march on the Capitol with his supporters but was stopped by the Secret Service. He also reiterated claims of widespread voter fraud during the 2020 elections. It could be recalled that at a seven and a half hour gap in the White House call records at the time when rioters were ransacking the Capitol. Trump denied destroying call records or using disposable phones on January 6, 2021. Elsewhere, passengers at United Kingdom airports today experienced long delays after border force officers walked out as part of the latest strikes of public sector workers across the country. According to the Public and Commercial Services Union, more than 1,000 passport control staff were expected to walk out on the first day of a strike that is planned to last until New Year over pay. The walkout is the latest addition to strikes of nurses, paramedics and workers in the rail and postal sectors in the biggest wave of industrial action over pay and conditions in Britain for decades. Following stoppages, the government refused to increase pay following years of wage stagnation and the cost of living crisis that has seen inflation running at nearly 11 percent. The strike, organized by the Public and Commercial Services Union, is the first of eight planned between today and January 1 at six UK airports. In a related development, military personnel covering for striking public sector workers over the Christmas period will receive bonus payments after disquiet over their use as spare capacity. Defense Secretary Ben Wallace announced that daily bonuses of £20 will be paid as armed forces personnel were standing in for border force workers. More than 1,000 members of the Army, Navy and Royal Air Force have been trained to cover roles including ambulance driving and checking passports. Chief of the Defence Staff, Admiral Tony Radakin, has been among those warning it is. Elsewhere, Kurdish demonstrators have clashed with police in central Paris after a 69-year-old gunman opened fire at a Kurdish cultural center and a hairdressing saloon killing three people and injuring three others. Police deployed outside the cultural center used tear gas to disperse the protesters who tried to break through a police cordon protecting Interior Minister Gerald Damanin at the scene. Reports say the demonstrators had thrown objects as police vehicles had their windows smashed as protesters threw bricks. In Spain, a prosecutor has dismissed a criminal case against Spanish border agents for their handling of a mass border crossing in which at least 23 people died attempting to enter the Spanish enclave of Melilla from Morocco. 
the handling of the tragedy has been a significant political headache for the Spanish government and led to calls for the interior minister to resign after criticisms from Spain's ombudsman and UN human rights experts. It could be recalled that an investigation was launched on June 28, four days after about 2,000 people tried to storm a border post separating Morocco from the enclave, with dozens managing to get across. Morocco has said that 23 people died in the incident, which resulted from a crush and from asylum seekers falling from a high fence, while Spanish authorities have argued that no deaths occurred on their territory. Uh, business news. World Bank has approved $311 million to increase grid-connected renewable energy capacity for West Africa in International Development Association financing. It noted that existing and prospective electricity in Chad, Liberia, Sierra Leone and Togo would benefit from the new regional emergency solar power intervention project. Reports say the new project includes a $20 million grant to facilitate future undertake its regional mandate. The World Bank task team leader of the project, Rhonda Jordan Anton. Solutions supported by the new project were manifold and had substantial benefits for the countries and the region. Excellent Business Shell today said it would pay 15 million euros to Niger Delta farmers to compensate them for damage from pipeline leaks. Recall that a Dutch appeals court had ruled last year following 13 years of legal battles that Shell's Nigerian branch should pay out for a series of leaks. The court also ordered that the parent company should install new pipeline equipment to prevent further devastating spills. Shell said today that it had reached a deal with the Dutch environmental group Milieu de Fancy that has helped the affected communities. Away from that, Facebook owner Meta a suit accuses the social media giant of allowing third parties, including Cambridge Analytica, to access users' personal information. The proposed settlement, which was disclosed in a court filing, would resolve a long-running lawsuit prompted by revelations in 2018 that Facebook had allowed the British political consulting firm Cambridge Analytica to access data of as many as 87 million users. Elsewhere, foreign direct investment into the Chinese mainland in actual use has expanded 9.9% year-on-year to nearly 1.16 trillion yuan in the first 11 months of the year. The Ministry of Commerce confirmed this today. Foreign direct investment reportedly reached $178 billion in U.S. dollar terms, up 12.2 percent from last year. The data from the ministry show that the service industry saw foreign direct investment inflow increase by 0.9 percent year-on-year to 842.6 billion yuan, while that of high-tech industries surged 58.8 percent from the same period a year ago while that in the high-tech service sector rose 23.5% year-on-year. Still to come in the news. Cameroon goalkeeper retires from internationals after World Cup dispute. So stay with us. Today, we we'll bring you up-to-date information on topical issues affecting the common Nigeria. From issues on politics, Hello, Nigeria. security, education, health, 
lifestyle, and so much more. Join Janice Coburn and Uyai Anyakin every weekday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Rise and Shine Daily, exclusive on Spectrum Television. Staying tuned now in health, the federal government has restated its commitment to reducing the negative impact of pesticides in foods, especially cowpea. The federal government stated this during the introduction of POD, borer resistant cowpea named Sampi 20T in Gombe. The desk officer, cowpea value, Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, OM Ekomabasi stated this during an awareness program on the newly released cowpea port bearer resistant variety. Ekomabasi noted that Sam P20T would help curb the health challenges associated with harmful pesticides. The event also witnessed the enlightenment of participants on the post-harvest handling techniques of cowpea by farmers in the northeast. Excellent help. The increase in COVID-19 and drug overdose deaths have pushed U.S. life expectancy to the lowest level since 1996. This is according to a new report released by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The center noted that there were 3,464,231 total deaths in the United States during 2021, which is 80,502 more than the total figure reported in 2020. It added that life expectancy at birth for the U.S. population decreased from 77 years in 2020 to 76.4 years in 2021, a decline for the second consecutive year. Heart disease remained the leading cause of death in the United States last year, followed by cancer and COVID-19. We go over now to Bright James for trending sports stories. Thank you, Savior Roberts. Good evening and welcome to the Sports Desk. I am Bright James. We begin with the news that FA Ajawa scheduled main event fight against Oscar Rivers for top rank boxing in January will not hold with both fighters anymore as Rivers is out of the bouts due to an eye injury and the Nigerian boxer will need a new opponent for the fight. Rivers from the veteran Rivers, the top rank cat at the Churning Stone Resort in Verona, New York. Ajabai, 2016 Nigerian Olympian, has quickly established himself as one of the division's heaviest heaters as he tallied six first-round knockouts in his first eight bouts. Tom Prank will have to locate a suitable opponent in time for Ajabai to remain as the main event for January 14th or else. The Nigerian will no longer headline the event. Now to tennis, where Andy Murray wishes he had played in his Scottish home line more to taking part in this week's Battle of the Brits in Aberdeen. Dan Evans beat Andy Murray as England clinched the 6-3-6 for the final match of the event. Three-time Grand Slam and 2015 Davis Cup winner Murray was now 35, has played at Glasgow's Emirates in recent years, but last year's Battle of the Brits had to be postponed because of rising COVID cases. Now to football, Cameron goalkeeper Andre Onanas retired from international football after falling out with head coach Rigobert Song at the World Cup. Song said Onana had asked not to play in Cameroon's second group game against Serbia. He was suspended from the national team and did not feature again flying out of Qatar. The 26-year-old said earlier today, and I quote, his story with the Cameroon national team has come to an end. Onana made his debut in 2016 and went on to win 34 caps. Cameroon exited the 2022 World Cup in the group stage with Brazil and Switzerland progressing to the knockout rounds. 
And that's all from the Sports Desk this evening. I am Bright. James. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Bright. And now on our entertainment news, the musical show The Voice Nigeria Season 4 is a singing competition television series that employs a panel of four coaches who, criti who critique artists' performances and guide their teams of selected artists through the remainder of the season. The show is expected to attract and help unleash Nigerian music talents for the global stage as the country's music industry continues to enjoy international attention this year. Talents can look forward to big names as coaches in the music industry who will help them navigate their music career and prepare them for the global stage. The coaches for the seasons The Voice Nigeria are first-time coaches Nato C, Neola and Praise, as well as returning coach Wajay. Still on entertainment, veteran Nollywood actor Hank Sanuku, who was rumored to be Bano Ezendi Alade in his hometown, where he gave out 10 million naira to 10 people and more, said Hank Sanuku was among the party guests which included Yule Doche, Destiny Atiko and others. Zubi acknowledged Hang's presence in his appreciation post on his social media page. This is coming days after comedian Lawal Bol And finally on entertainment, the YouTube video platform has won the right to broadcast most NFL football games in the US next year. It announced that a major win by the Google subsidiary underscored the growing role of streaming in sports. US media reported that Google will pay about $2 billion a year for seven years for the right to broadcast Sunday games on its subscription YouTube TV service available only in the United States. Reports say YouTube TV subscribers who now pay $64.99 a month for a viewing package will have to pay an added fee to view the game. Ensure the followers on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel, all of which you can find on our website, Spectrum TV. You have been watching Spectrum News at 9. My name is Saviour Robert, wishing you a terrific night rest and Merry Christmas in advance. Bye bye for now.